I'm Fernando de Souza. I'm the general manager of Microsoft for Africa. Fernando, Microsoft is involved in supporting entrepreneurship in Africa. What are the yes. ways in which you do that? Well, I think supporting entrepreneurs in Africa is really a combination of many, many different things. But I think you could define it as building that ecosystem that allows the entrepreneur to take, whether it's an idea or a service or a concept, to market, make money, turn it into a sustainable business, and actually deliver growth both to the local economy but also to the, the entrepreneur themselves. So when we think about supporting these entrepreneurs, we don't just think, oh, let's teach them a skill and that's going to make them successful because that's not enough. I think one needs to take the approach, which we do, we think about the world-class skills, you know, whether it's a technical skill, whether it's a business management skill, whether it's a funding uh, capability, right? But then we also look at that and say, what's the go-to market? Is there a strategy that they need to develop? Is there a productization effort that needs to take place to turn that idea or that concept into a tangible product? There's a whole other ecosystem of supply chain, logistics, management, you know, all of, all of the, the pieces that come together to make that entrepreneur successful. So as we've thought about supporting entrepreneurs, it's really a question of understanding the need from one end of the ecosystem to the other and thinking about where does technology play a role in every single one of these milestones or these areas and then applying that in, in the correct way. And in that entrepreneurship ecosystem, where is Microsoft doing things in practical terms? Hmm. So practical terms, the technology training and the skills that relate to technology entrepreneurs, technology startups. That's, that's a very, very tangible. We run almost on a daily basis. There's a class going on somewhere in Africa and people are being trained. The second one is, and we're doing this through distance learning, video learning, uh, digital content is the business, the concept of how do I set up a business, how do I, so the whole business administration, business management, very tangibly focusing on that. The third one is in funding, and we do funding through grants, so we actually, almost in a sense, in pre-incubate the entrepreneur. We have relationships with many, many organizations across the incubator, accelerator, uh, ecosystem, hubs, mm. all kinds of different organizations. So which kinds of organizations? Just <coughs> give, give a few examples. iHub, um, yeah. K-Labs, um, Afri Labs, th there's, there's many, the University of Witwatersrand in, in yeah. Johannesburg, many, many different organizations, 27 in fact, in yeah, all across, across the continent. The yeah. um, and so it, within that and the practical application of that is, and, and you know, we tend not to get terribly excited about things like competitions. Okay, I think we've, we need to move beyond the, let's have a competition and then give somebody a little bit of money for, for writing an application, but more thinking about how do we take business problems, how do we use our customer ecosystem, find needs that exist in that ecosystem, bring those needs to the entrepreneur and say, okay, let's work together so that you can become a service provider or a service delivery mechanism to those business issues. And the last piece, I think, is around some of the more established industries and I think here we're talking about extractors, we're talking about agriculture, we're talking about even the, the industry of government, so the mm. delivery of government services, where we're actually becoming very involved in building the services ecosystem around those industries. Let's be honest, unlikely that an African startup is going to become a world player in the oil and gas industry. Right? It's probably mm. not going to happen. Mm. However, the opportunity for entrepreneurs to become service providers to the oil and gas industry in Africa, I think is enormous. Ranging from catering systems and services to technology, right? And I think again, even if you're providing catering services, technology has a role to play in procurement, supply chain, business management, cash flow, all kinds of other areas the, as well. All the slightly boring stuff. All the slightly boring stuff, but it's, it's actually hugely right. important. Absolutely. Um, and, and I think, you know, we talked earlier when the issue of efficiency, right? Bringing the innovation to the entrepreneur to make those businesses efficient is going to make them more successful from an economic development perspective. But more importantly, and, and I think this is an area where we are absolutely focused is, how do we make sure that African entrepreneurs, you know, away from the sustainability and the long-term viability, because that's again, I mean, yeah. why would you start something up and then watch it fail, right? But it's the concept of African businesses becoming world-class businesses and participating in a global economy. Mm. For that, 
there is the boring stuff has to become really and this is you know an accusation that is thrown at Africa yeah. which is your boring stuff just doesn't work yeah okay well you know yeah. okay let's, let's invest let's make it work because I think yeah. fundamentally that's 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 the underlying yeah. foundation that's going to make the rest of it work. If that's the goal, though, what's the shortcoming, do you think, of the kind of entrepreneurship innovation ecosystem at the moment? You know, I probably I'll, I'll try to break it into two specific areas. One is people, right? We, we, need to, we need to accelerate that gap which exists today between the traditional education system and the need for somebody to be a successful entrepreneur and I think that there is a, a very significant gap in skills, in creativity, in collaboration, in communication. And, you know, I, not something that Microsoft is doing, but I think I wish we could just teach the kids just to articulate an idea mm. and just to communicate and collaborate. Never mind many of the other things that we're trying to be partnering with many organizations around accelerating and internships is a great way of doing this mm. bring these young people put them into working environments let them understand what that all entails and then take them out give them some money and then fund them so that they can move forward so that's the one part the other part is the economics of the entrepreneurial ecosystem are not yet working in Africa as an example I'm an investor I put money into entrepreneurs I fund startups how do I exit? What, mm. What's the exit stru structure in Africa? It, it's still almost at, at embryo stage mm. at this point. So there's not a, a huge incentive for the whole venture capital and for whole investment and for that which makes entrepreneurs become successful and grow to really operate in Africa that well. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done in that space. Together with that, the inability for African countries to trade across borders with each other, mm. the inability for an entrepreneur in Uganda to grow his or her business regionally mm. and constantly just looking north mm. and hoping that someone in some uh, you know, first world country so-called is going to give them the magic contract that's mm. going to enable them. This, I think, is a hindrance. Yes. I think we really, really need to think about the local economies and make these local economies. So, you, yeah, grow, work grow, at work at scale within a much more attainable yeah. environment than what it is at the moment. You have relationships as Microsoft with lots and lots of startups. Give me a couple of examples of things that have really you know, give you some sense of what can be done. Okay. I, I want to pick on, in West Africa, in Ghana, there's a company, a startup, a young startup, uh, it's called Leti Arts, L-E-T-I Arts. And the concept is, and, and the person who, who, st who founded Leti Arts is an amazing young man. So he's one of these superhero complete nutters, right? Mm. His whole world, I think, he, we were talking about, I was in, in Accra a few weeks ago, and we were talking about it, and he was saying when he was a young kid, his mother would kept saying, go out and play soccer, and all he wanted to do was sit and play superheroes and draw superheroes and yeah. whatever. So. But he's, this startup is essentially a gaming startup and his ambition is to take African culture and create superheroes that represent African cultural figures. Okay, and then in a sense bridge the gap between the traditional history and culture of Africa which to a large extent is kind of going a little bit dormant. Mm. It's, it's sort of dying a little bit with my generation. Mm. All right? And the younger generation isn't picking that up and so he's kind of totally innovative so you know I'll create a superhero of Shaka Zulu yeah. okay and then put all of that together so we've gone down this path he's, he's been we've, we've got a company that's running and yet economically it's very hard for him to make money so what he's done is he's taken the software engine that actually allows games to be built mm. and, and you know the, the execution part of yeah. it now what that is is actually a decision process task management engine because that's what games are all yeah. about, right? You go levels, you make decisions, yeah. you do all these things. And he's turned that into a, a business consulting business opportunity yeah. where he's actually going out and consulting to other entrepreneurs and using the gaming engine to help them build supply chain inventory management systems. Yeah. Um, so a second example. A second example, I think, in, in the healthcare industry, I, I think there's, there's massive opportunities in healthcare, both from the delivery of healthcare, but also 
enabling people to actually participate and, and benefit from healthcare. So there's startups that are doing telemedicine. Um, there's a startup that we've worked with in Zambia. They're now also deploying in West Africa around prescriptions, tracking prescriptions on um, M Pharma. Yeah. Um, and so uh, Gregory Roxon, who's the, the young man who runs this, actually interesting story. Gregory is a Ghanaian who was incubated at the Microsoft incubator in Israel, mm. okay, and then came to Africa, and is now deploying his solution in Zambia. Yes. When we talk about a small world, right? Yeah, um, and so initially was mobile device tracking a prescription from the doctor to the dispensary, but now this has evolved into back-end big data. What, what are the top 10 prescri prescribed medications? Who's doing what? What's available? Uh, supply chain, etc. So again, taking a core idea and suddenly turning it into a global industry or part of a global pharmaceutical industry, which I think is fantastic.